Ladies and gentlemen on the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, Samsung have won the court case against NVIDIA. It has been deemed that NVIDIA did not invent the modern day GPU. And this is a very much a landmark decision in graphics technology, let there be no doubt. So Judge Thomas Appender said that Samsung did not infringe two NVIDIA patents. They did infringe a third patent, but he ruled that the, that patent is invalid because it was not a new invention compared to previously known patents. So for those who are not too certain about what's going on here, in Santa Clara, NVIDIA filed a complaint against Samsung and Qualcomm and ITC in September 2014. Along with this, they also sued the companies in federal courts as well. Now, Samsung and NVIDIA have been suing and counter-suing for some time, but this all hinged on the fact that NVIDIA did release the first graphics processing unit back in 1999. And then they have accused of Samsung and Qualcomm for using their patents, essentially the modern day GPU, without permission or compensation, which is obviously quite a big deal. So what, first of all, is a modern day GPU? Essentially, GPUs have undergone multiple transformations over the years. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to boil it down to three major points in history. The first would start with Voodoo 1, Voodoo 2, Voodoo 3, that type of thing. So in the mid 1990s, GPUs weren't really a thing. In fact, there was no such thing as a GPU. It was just a graphics card, a video card. And what they were is very simple. They did not handle triangle. They did not handle the triangle setup. In other words, the actual drawing of that type of, you know, geometry. They did not handle the lighting. Their primary goal or primary function was texturing that type of jazz. So you would have, for example, t twin texture units, which was the whole thing about the Voodoo 2. And then fast forward to GPUs. So TNL, also sometimes known as Transform Clipping and Lighting, was a massive evolutionary step. While, once again, the Voodoos were certainly very important and no one can take away their place in history, TNL was very, very much a different beast altogether. It was the next step to make, I guess you could say, considerably more complicated scenes. It's the, it was the step needed to drastically increase polygon counts. It was the step needed to increase the levels of lighting detail. It was the step needed to do better clipping, which essentially all clipping is, is to draw parts of the scene which you'll actually see after the rendering is complete. So for example, you don't want to draw a, let's say, a box, all of the sides of the box, if you can only see, say, side A, with maybe a little bit of the top because you're render you're using a lot of rendering performance just for no reason. Lighting, for example, same deal. Most of this would be left to the CPU, which obviously isn't particularly the best deal because then you are taking away performance when the CPU could do other things. The, basically, the CPU just was not capable of doing that and with considerably more complicated scenery, peering games all the time, you can imagine how that just wouldn't work. Now it is worth noting that Nvidia did release this in late 99, the GeForce 256, but then ATI came around and they released their own graphics card, which was the Radeon DDR, if memory serves, I think. And anyway, they released that just shortly afterwards, and it was very much as very similar, to be honest with you, to the GeForce. Uh, ATI did release other cards to try and compete against the uh, 256, but they didn't have hardware TNL, and then they released once again the Radeon. But, moving on, the next evolutionary step is the unified shader models, which is where we are now, uh, which it started actually back in Direct uh, 3D at 10, and it's essentially the removal of having separate geometry, vertex and pixel shaders and now you have of course the unified shaders and what those unified shaders will do is pretty much do whatever work is required. 
So essentially, let's say a scene requires very little geometry work, but mostly vertex and pixels, just for the sake of argument, then you can use your shaders to do just that. Whereas on the other hand, you might have another scene that requires considerably more geometry, but less vertex and pixels, or what have you. Or you might have a scene that requires pretty much an even mix of all three. This was, once again, very important and made a massive difference in how we deal with graphics. And it actually started back in the days of like the 8800 uh, cards, the ATI Terascale uh, graphics cards as well, and even GPUs like um, the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 does use that as well, so it's very important. Now the reason I'm really happy, uh, maybe not happy, but I, I feel it's the best decision. That's probably the best way of putting it. That Nvidia did not win this court case is while there is a lot of patent trolling from Samsung, I'm not going to dispute that. All we have to do is look at the the complaints from Samsung with HTC and LG. It's just it's a patent minefield. Everyone is suing everyone, which I don't think is really good to be totally honest, but it is what it is. However, in this particular case. This is clearly a case where if NVIDIA had won this, it wouldn't be good for anyone concerned apart from NVIDIA. It wouldn't benefit the gamers, it wouldn't benefit developers, and it wouldn't benefit games developers, publishers, anyone. It would just really benefit NVIDIA. And I think it would send very negative messages to other companies. Don't get me wrong, I, with have massive i have massive massive respect for nvidia for amd slash ati for 3d effects and all of the companies who are involved in graphics technology because without each of them um things would be very different i mean core technology that you take for granted now for example fxaa without nvidia creating this and it is, by the way, an anti-aliasing algorithm created by a chap called Timothy Lotes. Uh, I'll spell that out. L-O-T-T-E-S. He created this with NVIDIA, and this was back in the days, I think, of the GTX 480, if memory serves. It was some point in 2009, I don't remember. He, he published a white paper anyway. I actually did re read the white paper, I will admit, and it was... Now, how many games, especially on the consoles, how many games use that? Seriously, think about it. How many games on consoles, PCs, like whether it's whether you're running an AMD graphics card, an Intel graphics card, an Nvidia graphics card, how many games do you just put FXAA on? Well, you might not because it bleeds your eyes, but still, that's not the point. It's, you know, SMAA, all of these different effects with different graphics cards and all these little pieces of technology that now we've just just completely and utterly taken in our stride. We're just like, yep, this is just kind of how it is. So all of these companies, without their contributions to the field, things would be very different. However, while I have massive amounts of respect for NVIDIA, I do feel this, the way this has gone is probably the best for the industry. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.